This is Federal Head Nirvana right here. Whoa! Oh! 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 John! Anyone who's owned a project car will know this. Things rarely go according to plan with hidden issues like rust or engine trouble, all the way to losing the 10 mil, hampering progress. One such example of this is Lee Jones's incredible P1800 gasser that won our recent Hot Wheels Legends Tour livestream, where they're searching for an all-new vehicle worthy of becoming a Hot Wheels die-cast car. We were hoping to film the drag car this week, but as is the way of Project Car Life, unforeseen engine trouble meant that we had to cancel. Either way, you'll see the glorious gasser again in the Hot Wheels Legends Tour final, which you can tune into on Facebook on the 13th of November featuring celebrity guests such as Jay Leno and Henrik Fisker. For more information, hit the link in the description below. In this video then, we'll take a look at another of our shortlisted Hot Wheels Legends cars. It's something I've never driven before, but even before I turn the key, I already know you'll love it. Right, so this is John and his RX-7. We're in your garage, John, and you've done pretty much all of the work yourself, haven't you? Yeah, most of it. So let's start at the front. You've got a nice splitter there. Where'd you get that? Uh, I made that myself. Of course you did. Yeah. Okay. How old are you, by the way? 23. 23. What were you doing when you were 23? I'm guessing not making splitters. It was a design that I had in my head and there wasn't anything sort of super similar on the market. So I thought I should make it myself. And also if I do that, when I go over a speed bump and it comes flying off, I've got a mould for it. TCP Magic full wide body kit, R Magic style headlights, carbon bonnet, Cosmos R1s with D2 big brake kit. One of the most striking features about your RX-7 is the paintwork. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you know, I'm sure you all know, but I have an MX-5 with a V6 and it has exactly the same paint. It's a Mazda Soul Red, isn't it? Yes. Was this your first colour choice for this car? No. So uh, my first choice was actually an Audi yellow. I painted the rear bumper and then took it outside into the into the daylight and I thought that that's just not right. So funny story, I actually went walking around the local car dealerships, came to a Jeep dealership where there was a Mazda CX-5 parked outside in the sole red and I instantly thought that that was just the colour. Did you do this yourself? So no, the, the colour was put on by uh, Gavin Pink at the paint shop. He does amazing paint jobs. It's got my own sort of custom exhaust that goes as a centre exit, which I think uh, looks really good, sort of suits the back. I, I, I love symmetry, so having it coming out in the centre is, is ideal. And then uh, the spoiler mounts. I'm not massively keen on the ones that are right on the sort of side of the boot. So I thought, well, again, if I want it, I've got to make it. So uh, yeah, I made them myself. And then uh, the spoiler's quite an aggressive spoiler, but it, it sort of has to be with a kit like this. John, what is your favourite part of your car. Uh, another question as well, what's your least favourite or what's that thing that frustrated you most when you were trying to build this? My favourite, favourite part has got to be the sort of front wheel arches. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah you, it really you, is. Know, you never see anything like it on the road. And, and yeah, every time I look at it, I think, God, that just, that looks crazy. In terms of something I've probably struggled with, when I was actually doing the project, something that I thought was very laborious and time consuming and felt like it had no end was was 100 percent the bodywork doing something of this scale and bonding the arches on and blending them in so it, it looks seamless that just felt like it wasn't ever going to end but i mean the finish is phenomenal and let me remind everyone john is 23 years old and he's done this Christ, when I was 23, I'd, yeah, I can't even repeat what I was doing at 23. What about engine-wise? What have you done there? So it's had a street port done to it. Obviously, the apex seals and everything and bearings have been replaced. And then it's still got the sequential twin turbos on it. Uh, the reason why I wanted to keep them for the time being is because I like the fact that you have very good drivability on it. And also, it's something that's quite different. Everyone goes single turbo straight away. And because I'm quite young, I wanted to get used to decent power on rear wheel drive before I go crazy and uh, speaking of power it's 340 at the moment okay um, that's it, plenty I think that's plenty well it has got
got room for more, it's just uh, the vacuum line uh, for the second turbo uh, didn't survive the rolling road. I've also done a front mount intercooler. I didn't make that, I gave it to Pro Alloy who basically they said you can give us any sort of pattern work, a drawing. I literally gave them a bit of wood and some air conditioning tubes on the end with tape holding it all on and they came back with that which is incredible. I've been looking at doing something stupid crazy like uh, doing a sort of compound turbo setup like they do with diesels but uh, I think unless I don't want the engine to blow out of the bonnet I think that's not a very good idea. And all the work where has that been done? Is that in here? Yeah, literally in here. This sort of shed <laughs> was purposely built to, to do this sort of thing in here. So away from the build, what is this like to drive? What is it like to live with? Because it looks to me like it could be a little bit tricky. It's obviously quite loud. You can tell that the neighbours aren't happy. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not the loudest car in the world, but it's loud enough to be a nuisance. It's a lovely car to drive it's, if there's a nice day and you just want to go out for a you know, a casual drive is, is the perfect car for it. How much time and effort have you put into this? So I've owned the car for three years. It took about a year and a half, a year and three quarters to actually, from when it came in here, to start ripping it apart to when it first rolled out again. That was probably helped a lot by the fact um, of furlough. You know, when I was in furlough, I spent every minute of every day in here working on the car and, and that's all I did for a good two months or so. Amazing. And I presume that this is a car that you will hopefully never sell. Oh, 100%, yeah. When I was going into this build, I was thinking, oh, I've got to do it right because I'll have it for the next 50 years. Good stuff. All right, well, um, I think the only thing that's left to do, if it's all right with you, is for me to take your furlough project out for a drive and um, find out how awesome it is on the road. Oh! Right, got to be delicate. Oh. oh, very good. John, where's the seat movie thing forward? You're joking. Have you seen the size of me? Right, we're going to have to rethink this. <laughs> Thank you, Jack, for laughing at me. You're about the same height as, uh, as John. You'd be perfect in here. And you really like these cars, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did anyone bring a booster? Oh, that's good, isn't it? It's funny. I might need your jacket. All right, let's see if I can... You're perfectly legal, officer. This will do me. Let me level with you. Uh, Japanese cars, except for Phil, obviously, RX-7, stuff like that. Not really my bag. Take it or leave it. I'm not like fanboying over this, I'll be honest, which is probably quite a good thing, because it means that my hopes and dreams probably won't get crushed if I think it drives like a nail. Okay, right. First start up, let's give this a go. That's all right, isn't it? Oh, God, that's not comfortable on the back. John is about 6'1", six 6'2", six I want to say. I'm not. I'm like, I'm like 5'11". Good throttle response, great noise. <laughs> Do I like this already? I think I might. God, the engine, the Wankel engine is so smooth. I do love a good old Wankel. Right, let's get going. Do you know what? This is a 1994 car. It actually feels modern. The suspension is glass smooth. It's ironing out all the imperfections. The brakes are stonking. Let me try those out. Oh, oh, the brakes are so good. Oh, and the noise. <laughs> this is very, very exciting. I genuinely started today thinking, yeah, RX-7, going to be cool. You're all going to love it. But for me, this wasn't a pin-up car that I loved and that I aspired to own. You know, I had all the German stuff on my bedroom walls. I am, dare I say it, almost speechless. This feels like a really special car and I've already got a massive grin on my face after only a few minutes driving it. This is Petrol Head Nirvana right here. You've got pops and crackles from the exhaust. The steering is really 
on point. Remember, this is the garage build, a father and son garage build. And here we are driving something that looks, I mean, it looks like a quarter of a million pound car. It really does. Just the fit and finish of this and the thought that's gone into it. It's so amazing what people can do when they put their minds to it. People are definitely turning their heads. They are loving this car. And the good thing, because John drives this around town, I know it's gonna clear all the bumps. Fantastically thought out build, it really is. I can't imagine what this feels like on full attack mode. I bet it is insane. I don't feel intimidated to drive it. You know, the gearbox is nice and light. The pedal weight is nice and light. If this is what John is doing at 23, imagine what he'll be doing in 10 years time. The eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that this is a petrol garage, and when you own a car like this, a rotary, you're gonna be here a hell of a lot. So get used to that. Oh. Yes! That is so good! It absolutely sings. And the brakes on this are monumental. It, it really feels magical. And I can't believe that I've spent 36 years not coveting the RX-7 when they're this good. I mean, this is obviously an extreme because this is probably one of the best that I'll ever get to drive. I'm in love with this car. I'm in love with the noise. I'm in love with the handling, with the brakes. But more than that, I'm just, I love the way it makes me feel. Old school, turbocharged, massive power. <laughs> oh, it's so good, this is so good. But just how good is John's RX-7 really? Let me demonstrate through the medium of babble. Whoa. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. John, I'm sorry I'm making these really crude noises, but that's literally, if you were in the passenger seat with me, you'd understand. It kind of makes your heart sink and your stomach go up that way. And it's just, ah, ah, ah. I'm in love with an RX-7. Never thought I would say that, but John and his dad have shown me the way. Not only is it beautiful to look at, it's exquisite to drive. There's nothing I don't like. Oh, there is one thing I don't like, is that later I won't be driving it anymore, and that's quite depressing. Build me one, please, John. I'll give you lots of money. RX-7, probably one of the most fun cars I've driven ever. It's been a year since I've driven a car this fun, and that last car was a Cyan P1800. A car that costs, I can't even remember how much, half a million? euros or something like that. And here we are in something that John and his dad built in their garage. <sighs> Isn't it cool what humans can achieve when they really put their minds to something? Thank you again, John, for letting me drive your car. I'm the only person outside you and your dad who have done that. And to trust me with something as special as this, it does mean a lot to me, so again, from the bottom of my heart, John, thank you very much. And I can't wait to see what you do with your life, because whatever it is, it's going to be epic. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then make sure you subscribe here. Check out more videos there. And don't forget, you can find out how the Eleanor, Lee and JD families P1800 Gasser gets on in the live final on the 13th of November. The link to that is in the description below. From me, goodbye.